for there is no one to them that fear him. The only one to do that shall remember. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Amen. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that is tired of life, and loveth many things that ain't good any good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking God. Be far from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The praise of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and deliver it, them out of all their trouble. The Lord is nigh unto them that are alone on high, and saveth them in the kingdom of the unconscious. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. He keepeth all his help home, and not one man is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate righteous, they that hate righteous shall be. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's be out of peace. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. How many of you be remembered? Have you got something deep on your heart, some loved one that's sick or afflicted? You know, somebody that's in a trial or burden, we believe that Jesus Christ is here because he said he was. We believe that the Lord hears the prayer of the righteous, those that forsaken the things of the world and living for God. You hold that love upon your heart, whatever that need is. Right now, while we pray, you just hold that on your heart. Let's just believe God to answer. Our most gracious, loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we feel the pull of the hour, Lord. We feel the pressure of the hour. Lord Jesus, we know that the end of the world has come. And Father, it has caused great pressure to come upon the peoples of the world. And they do not know what it is, Lord. But Father, Thou hast revealed it unto us. We know that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is at hand. And our heart does rejoice, Lord. Lord, we want to make ourselves ready for thy coming, Father. We want to be ready. We want to be watching and ready for the soon coming of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we have loved ones that out of safety in this hour. They have not accepted the Lord's provided way of deliverance, Lord. Lord, we have mamas and daddies and brothers and sisters and loved ones, Lord, and friends, Lord. We want to see them saved, each one. We pray, Father, that as these dear people tonight hold those people upon their heart, God, we pray that you will bless them, each one, Lord Jesus. We pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you will answer their prayer request in their heart, Lord. For I ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will do it, Lord. Bless us tonight, Father, as we speak of thee in thy word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It certainly is a wonderful pleasure to civil this little storefront building and preach the gospel and sing the song of Zion. This is very comforting in this perplexing hour to gather around the safety of the Word of God and the blood of the Lord Jesus. It's so wonderful to know that we're safe in this hour. That is, if we have accepted God's provided way. Uh, my wife was reading a little article today about the earthquake they just had overseas. And uh, the different people were, uh, they had made an investigation. And uh, all of the cows and the animals that was in the farm fields did not come into the barn, and they stayed out and huddled together, and uh, when they did drive them in, the cows would not give their milk down. The 
not give the milk down in just a few hours while the earthquake took place. And scientists is wanting to know who told those cows and those horses that the earthquake was going to take place and why wouldn't they give their milk down? Well, that's a shame that the Lord Jesus can leave, leave dumb fruit beasts that don't have no soul to safety. And a man, he can't lead him to safety because he's got a made up mind that he wants to go on the way of destruction. You know that it's a lot harder, a lot harder uh, to, to go to hell than it is to heaven. Amen. You've got to work hard at going to hell, but it's easy to go to heaven. Amen. You know, that's right. All you have to do is just let go and let the Lord have His wonderful way. But I want to tell you, it's a hard. You have to work at it night and day to go to hell. Because the Lord stands there and just begs and pleads with you to try to get you saved. How many appreciate the long suffering of the Lord? Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Betty, we don't know who your friend is, but he, he looks like a friendly fellow. We've had to have him. That's your brother. Well, I didn't want to be, be presumptuous, but I thought it was something like that anyway. And we're sure glad to have you tonight. Sir, we're very happy. Ready, very dear to our hearts. So we're very dear to our friend Betty. And so we're so thankful to each one that comes in to visit with us. We don't have nothing to join, and we don't have no creed with the Bible, and we just love to fellowship with everyone. How many love the Lord Jesus? Amen. That's right. He's been so good to us. Amen. And, uh, Amen. We just don't really uh, appreciate the Lord enough. We can never praise Him. That's why we like to make a joyful noise to the Lord here. Because we want to feel at home when we get in heaven. Because Amen. the Bible said, that all that you could hear was, Hallelujah, glory to God in heaven. Everybody Amen. there was saying, Hallelujah, hallelujah Amen. to the Lord God. Said the Lord, our, Lord God, on heaven to reign. So we want to get used to praising down here. We're not a bit ashamed of it. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Harry, we want to thank you kindly for saving us about $50. Amen. Putting that uh, title up out front there in this little old store. Yes. God bless you, brother. We certainly appreciate it. How do you think Harry did a good job? Yeah. So we thank you, Brother Harry, and we should appreciate that. Uh, I guess most of you know that you know by now that Brother Clifton uh, had an accident and broke his leg very bad. Uh, crushed his leg and uh, he's home today. And I know that's uh, very sorrowful to each one of our hearts. But it, it always comforts my heart in knowing that there is no accident with the Lord. Amen. Though you and I may say accident to use that word, there is no accident with the Lord Jesus. According to His word, that there is a hedge around about every saint of God, and that there is nothing that can happen to you if you are a child of God. There is nothing that can harm you unless it is permitted by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Amen. Holy Spirit does not harm anyone. But He lets, he lets uh, uh, ministering angels, good or bad, carry out His divine will and purpose. So He would let this Satan attack you uh, at His permission. He must get permission from the Lord before He does that to a real born-again child of God. Now, we all know Brother Clinton life that he is a child of God. And I went to see Brother Clifton and I had talked to Brother Clifton about some personal things uh, some time ago. And uh, he had a few warnings to the Lord about some things that he was supposed to do. Now, brother and sister, I believe this with all my heart. My first duty is to the Lord God. And my second duty is to my wife. My third duty then is to my children. But God comes first, my wife comes second, and the children comes third. And then my brothers and sisters, then they come somewhere in the line along there somewhere. But now no wives 
uh, should anything take the first place between the Lord. And I'm sorry to say that uh, there is just so, uh, Brother Clifton is just so busy since I have been here a year and a half that he's everybody's carpenter, everybody's mechanic, everybody's plumber, and the poor boy, uh, his wife, has been through a terrible trial that they never had any fellowship with him. And uh, he has tried to find time, uh, but he is not the kind of a person that can say no. And we had talked this over about it, and he got acid in his eyes, and was pretty bad off. And then there's a couple other things happened. I said, I felt impressed on my heart to talk to him. I said, I believe the Lord is trying to get you to do something, Clifton. And I said, that, and it's better for you to go ahead and obey the Lord now than to have some, to, to suffer something worse. And I told that boy right there about the same thing, and he just laughed at me. I said, I'll see you in bed in a couple of weeks. And that's just where it was. Dearly beloved, I'll tell you. Now, uh, Brother Clifton's first duty is to the Lord Jesus. He feels the call of God in his life. And uh, he's got to give that time to the Lord regardless of wives, sisters, and brothers, and whatever it is. That's more important. Let everything else go. We'll take care of itself some way. How may say that? Amen. Amen. And he's the one that it's not your leg. Though you talk Brother Clifton into doing something, it's not your leg, it's his leg. Bro, it's him that's laying in the hospital and uh, the bill's coming in and just bought a little new car. There's a man sitting out there, George Barella. Came up to New York City, almost a dead man. Came up home, came in my prayer room where I spent most of my time, 99% of my time in a room. There in the presence of the Lord, it wasn't a few days but he was well. By just sitting in the presence of the Lord in prayer and the Word, He was well without laying a hand upon Him or praying for Him as well. But just as soon as uh, everything else got busy, this one wanted something done, that one wanted something done, and that's wonderful. I'm guilty too. Brother George has helped me and so has Brother Wright out. And uh, I find a lot of times that this is broken, that needs fixing, but the last six months, I told my wife, I said, everything, just let it go. If I can't fix it myself, let it go. Don't call these brothers and bother. They work. They don't have time to pray. Seek the Lord. i got plenty of time. Just let them things go. They're more important. And uh, then just as soon as Brother Pirelli got busy and uh, helping this one, helping that one, and we should do that. Provided you, you have already given your time to the Lord. Amen. But the Lord's Word and prayer comes first. Amen. And if you let something else take second and third place, Look out, broken leg or something that's on its way. How may say amen? amen. Now we, it's a lot better for us to learn these things. It can go a lot worse than that. Believe you me, we got we can know we've seen these things and it can go worse than that. God can't speak to you, cracking your leg, or some little thing, he can make it more severe until he just keeps putting it on you until it's better. So to just go ahead and let God have His way. Give Him first place. Because everything that seems important is not very important. Anyway. How many say amen? It's not important. So now I, I took it upon my heart to talk to you about Brother Clifton. Now Brother Clifton cannot be everybody's carpenter and everybody's plumber and everybody's helper because it, if you only knew, see, you, let me tell you something. You know about your problem. You've got your problem and that's all. That's all that you've got. But did you ever stop to think about that other man's problem? Amen. Did you ever stop to think about what he maybe what he's going through? I know people that's going through things that you don't even know nothing about. Amen. See? Now I, I we're going to have to learn that uh, learn how to do these things to keep from suffering the way we have, we've been suffering. And we don't want to... How many of you don't want to undo the suffer? I don't want to undo the suffer. I want to yield myself to the Lord. Amen. And I didn't have to tell Brother Clifton. I said, Brother Clifton, you know why you're in here, do you? He said, yes, Brother. Bob, I do. I said, I do too. And he opened the Bible and showed me a scripture given. You ought to see it. So that's good. Uh, I'm sorry that he's got a broken leg. But if it takes a broken leg for Brother Clifton, 
to give first place to the Lord Jesus, then I thank the Lord for the broken Amen. leg. How may thank the Lord for Amen. the broken leg? I would rather see God use Brother Clifton than, uh, than for us to have uh, Brother Clifton to be right at our, uh, you know what I mean, right there to help us. And I'm sure that every time that you and I had something for Brother Clifton to help us do, that it was needed. But, like I say, uh, the Lord Jesus and Brother Clifton's life and his part of the ministry is more needful than, my, than what I need. And I, if I never, if I had to bail water out of that sister, I would rather bail water out of it and cause the brother to miss the Lord. Now, how many feel that way? Amen. And you're going to promise the Lord, let us promise the Lord that before we call a brother to come over and help us do something, let's pray first and find out if that brother has any time. Did you know that I seen Brother Clifton wave mud to his knees? And he was busy helping everybody else, but he waited mud to his knees with no driveway. And his house had everything wrong with it and couldn't fix it. And he was over at everybody else's house one or two o'clock in the morning. Amen. How many knows not telling the truth? Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you something. Brother George almost left this assembly, almost left this assembly and moved away because he he was uh, getting as bad as he was when he come out of the deathbed almost. Because... This one had something fixed, and that had something fixed. And Brother George is not this assembly's mechanic, neither is Brother Wright out the carpenter, plumber, masonry. Right. See, we just got to, I don't like saying these things. Somebody's got to say them. That's all yeah. that Now, how many of you want to give the Lord Jesus Christ first place in your life? Where's brother, sister, whatever it is, let's do it. Yeah. And then everything else comes yeah. later. Now, so much of that. May we live up to it. God help us. May, may I live up to it too. I, I, I'm guilty. I, I'm, I'm more guilty than all of you. Letting that brother work over there and help me like he did. So I, I'd rather, if it need be, I'd rather work over there in the woods live in the kingdom. I call you to miss the Lord. Give God the first place to tonight. I, I wish I could really say something to really make you really realize how important that is. Now, uh, I hope you remember Brother Bob Smith. It's a letter from him. He's wanting to move here real bad. So I, I hope you may remember him. Right. Now I've got here a golden nugget box. And I'm going to read you some things. And I'm sure that they'll bless you. Amen. How many like golden nuggets? Amen. Uh, I looked he, in there just a minute ago. And uh, uh, something just jumped inside of me, and I got blessed real good. Something I've never heard before. Now, I'm going to, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to keep this water here. Now, usually I get to preach and get excited, and I turn the pulpit over and spill the water. But I'll try not to do it. Now, this is taken from. Spirit speaks to a prophet. March 8, 1960. Now listen, this is a long, my, this is a, it's a big one. Now there is so much in these days pertaining to gifts. So many people judge people by gifts that they have. Well, I believe that these things are gifts. I believe that we see them take place, what we see take place are gifts. They are God-given gifts. But if we do not use them in the right way, the way that God intended them to be used, then we can do more harm with the gifts than we could if we did not have the gifts. Now, how many see that so out on the heat, right on the field today, where men bypass the Word of God and manifest the gift and make merchandise of God's people and are leading thousands of poor souls astray by a gift now let me say this. Did you know the Bible said that God gives supernatural gifts to rebellious children? Amen. Rebellious children that won't even obey God's Word, yet they can manifest gifts in the power of God. Amen. Isn't that something? That, that gift don't mean nothing if it isn't speaking according to the Word of God. The other night I made a statement from the pulpit saying I'd rather see brotherly love existing among the church 
And if we didn't even have it, one case of healing, I would too. Amen. Amen. Take the minister of today. He has got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He knows that if he preaches that word, here you go. Amen. Amen. Uh, if he preaches that word, he is going to cut away his fame. How many believe that? Amen. If the preacher preaches the word of God, he's not going to have much fame. Amen. Because people today, the majority of the people only want the minister to tell them something wonderful about it. They don't want you to tell them the bad points. But brother, it's the bad points about me that I want to find out now. I want to find them out now so I can get rid of them. I used to say, God don't resurrect the, uh, you don't resurrect living like the devil and turn into an angel. You get, you live like that down here. Make yourself worthy of that place up there. There's not going to be no fussing up there. Amen. Is that right? There's not going to be no tongue tattlers up there. Backbiters. How many say amen? amen. you got to get that spirit right down here. Amen. But if the man preacher preaches the word of God, he's going to cut away his fame. It is going to put him in a little bitty church somewhere. Amen. Or maybe even out on the street. But he also knows that there is something burning in his heart. Thank God for that. Amen. But he sees the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. He doesn't care whether he has a big church or a little church. He doesn't care if he has food. Only mindful of one thing, and that is life within him crying out. He is trying to achieve something for the glory of God. That man will act the very life of the Spirit that's in him. Today we would put up our fist and fight him. Chop his head off him. Get him out of here. He doesn't belong to us. But David said, talk about the King David, let him alone. The Lord has told him to curse him. Now we're talking about that little uh, crippled fellow that spit and cursed on David when he was rejected by the people of God. That little cripple ran along there and threw dirt on David. And that is exactly what they do today to the Spirit of Christ. A bunch of holy rollers. Uh, a bunch of that or that. It's like the people, how they all sit out there and just go off and look at us because they can hear us praise the Lord. They, they see you come in, you women come in with long hair, and they think you're just a big bunch of holy rollers. Brother, one day it's going to turn around on the other tree. When Jesus Christ, the King of the Holy Rollers, comes rolling in the hall. It's going to turn on the other face. How may say amen? I'm so glad that I can be called a Holy Roller for Jesus. Amen. Brother said I'd never roll. But if I thought it'd do me good, Brother Shaw, I'd roll. I wouldn't be ashamed to roll for God. Many people are rolling rocking for the devil. You would you'd be ashamed to be called a holy roller, would you? No. That's that's the name the devil tacking on God's children. Amen. Oh, sir. When David returned in power, he came back as full king of Israel. Hallelujah! Don't worry, this Jesus, whose spirit we have today, acting his part out, will return again in a physical body the second time in glory and power and majesty. Amen. Brother, that ain't far off, be We are trying to achieve something for the kingdom of God. It is manifesting God. All these gifts and things do not make one greater than the other. It just makes us all work together for the perfection of the body to bring us together as one people, as the people of God. When you see someone going contrary, don't curse them, just let them alone. Somebody has to do it. Just wait till Jesus comes in power. Amen. That's right. Everybody's got a ministry. Some some people have a ministry of talking about people. Some uh, some people have a ministry of uh, defaming ministers' character, running the ministers down, talking about the character. That's a ministry. Amen. Sure, it's a ministry. And uh, bless the Lord, I don't want no ministry like that. Amen. Amen. And then there, there's a there's a uh, then there's a uh, a ministry of preaching the word, Amen. a ministry of love. Of times, of peace, and joy, and edification. How many want to minister like that? Amen. Now, ever uh, uh, somebody is playing the part. Now, don't let's don't be like that fellow that kicked dirt on David. Now, this Thursday night, you 
get a little dose of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and a little bit uh, of, out of all the Bible. And uh, I like it that way. It's good. Now, brother, may I say this in closing? If a man who was the theme of the Old Testament of all, whom all the prophets were anointed with God's Spirit, spoke everything they had said was fulfilled to the letter in him. Surely then this great person called the Son of God ought to know how to set up the New Testament church. Amen. Now how many say amen? amen. I don't want to try to do it. This is going to be good. Don't you believe that? Question. Amen. We believe that. He ought to have the right conception and know how to set up a New Testament church. Have you seen one? I have. I've looked all over the country and I have not seen one real New Testament church yet. Amen. How many believe one's come? Amen. I believe. I've never seen one like they had on the day of Pentecost yet. First thing I want to call to your attention here is in Matthew 16, 13, 18. I've got a feeling this is going to be awful good because I know what's in Matthew 16. When he was speaking to the disciples and said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now you know where he's going, don't you? How many know where he's going already? If you're where you ought to be, you ought to know what I'm going to read now. Now remember, he's talking about a New Testament church and how it's going to be set up. And he's saying the Holy Spirit knows how to set up a real church like they had on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Now let's see here what it says. Matthew 16. Some say that thou art John the Baptist, Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But Jesus said, But whom do whom say ye that I am? Then Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, my New Testament church. Amen. 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 And the gates of hell shall not prevail against this New Testament church. Amen. Huh? I'm going to do Testament in there. Now there, Jesus was speaking of the church. Now watch closely. If I am wrong, God forgive me and you forgive me. Now the Catholic Church says it was a stone. Peter. Upon Peter he built the church. Now we know that's wrong. We Protestants, Protestants disagree with that. We Protestants say that he built his church upon himself. But I want to disagree with that, friendly. Friendly. It wasn't that at all. It was up on the spiritual revelation of himself. Amen. Flesh and blood, you never learned this in seminary. As good as they are, you could never learn this from some church creed, as good as it is. Flesh and blood have not revealed it, this to you. It is not an intellectual conception of how you must make your speech or bow, or what a great thing you must do here on earth. It's not to build a great thing or do this or that. It's the revelation of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. He was the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now watch and see what the gates of hell are against. They are not against the denominations, for the government recognizes them. The world recognizes the denominations, all of them. Each one of us, as American citizens, has the right to the denomination, which is fine. We appreciate that. But that is not what the gates of hell are against. Amen. They are against the spiritual revelation Amen. of Christ. Amen. Being here now, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that is what they are against. The gates of hell shall be against it, but they shall never prevail. The church turned him down, and the people called him bells above and devil. They denied the prophets that had spoken of this. Jesus said, said, you build the sepulchers and you're the ones who put them in there. You are like the whitest sepulchers full of dead men's bones. 
there without spiritual discernment, not knowing that that was the Lamb of God, that He was supposed to be that way and act that way, while acting and doing the things they do are fulfilling the Word of God. Isn't that true? Amen. The same inspired prophet said to Eden, and lines would shine. There would be a former and latter rain come together in the last days by grace. What is it? The former rain is coming over, and the latter rain is past due. They have lapped over, and the former and the latter rain are coming together. The Holy Spirit made manifest by the power and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There you are. I hope you got that. You know, did you get it? The former and latter rain are lapped over together in the Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is saying this. Amen. Amen. And when the latter rain is manifested, see, when the latter rain is manifested in the bride, it will be the Word of God made manifest and made flesh before your eyes again. Amen. That's deep, but it's true. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, when His grace was long-suffering, here it is today, long-suffering, a lap over Bringing the clouds from the old days and the clouds of this day together. Former rain is first, the first rain we have had. Now here comes the latter rain with the former rain coming on the latter rain. East and west together, both rains falling together. Divine healing plus the angel of God to visit the secrets of the heart. Oh, it looks like the true born again children of God can see that. Now it was by saying this, I have a dozen more scriptures, but we haven't got time. Ever true, born again, prophet of the Lord, preacher, Sunday school teacher, seer, apostle, missionary, has his whole heart set and is so filled and anointed with the Spirit of God, whatever his office might be, whether it is to teach, preach, evangelize, or see vision, he will do it to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Elijah and the meal offering, 1960 Madison Square Garden. Now all those things have a meaning. Now, uh, this is where I jumped over there. Now, Lord be my helper, I never know things. Oh, I never, never knew this was here. I want you to remember what I preached two Sundays ago. Now all these things have a meaning. Meal represented Christ. Christ was the meal offering. When they ground the meal for the wave offering, I mean, remember me preaching on the wave offering. In the Old Testament, which was Christ in the wave offering, they ground it with a certain type of verb so that every little piece of meal would be cut just the same. This is because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Look what she did. She mixed the Word and the Spirit together. Many people have the Spirit without the Word. Some have the Word without the Spirit. But if you put them both correctly in their place, put them both correctly in their place, and there is a cake on the road. There is something in the making. How many believe it? you believe that what I preached to you about the loaf of bread? She said, I have just a little bit of meal left in the barrel. I have just got enough oil to dampen it, and I've already dressed it uh, or mixed it. I've got the Word and the Spirit mixed together in there. I've got the cross here to lay it on to make it into a cake to give it life. Amen. What do we get from this? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. <laughs> what do you get out of that? He said, seek ye first the kingdom. What do you get out of this loaf of bread, this cake that's on its way? He said, what do you get out of it? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's what that loaf of bread is. The kingdom of God. Oh, boy. And all these other things will be added. Brother Brown, how do I know? The only thing I know is to put God first and move on. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Amen. Sacrifice. Mix the oil. Mix the word and the spirit together. Lay 
lay yourself up on the cross and say, Here I am, Lord. Put God first in everything. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Put God first in everything. Amen. For thus saith the Lord, the cruise will not run dry, neither will the barrel go empty until the day that the Lord God sends rain upon the earth. Amen. He knew that was the prophet of God. Amen. Oh, I desire to see that meal offering be made into a loaf of bread right away. By second coming, 1957. It was so late, in fact, that she had to light a candle. Not only did she light a candle, but she got a broom and went to house clean. Oh, brother, if there ever was a need of time for lighting a candle... Sending forth of the gospel light. Look out now. The Holy Ghost back into the church. What we preached last night about lighting a candle. Yeah, huh? yeah. How many say you yeah. Oh, brother, if there ever was a need of a time for lighting a candle, sending forth of the gospel light, the Holy Ghost back into the church. Yeah. It is now not for some fanaticism to be worked up for emotionally or to be jumping for joy, but for a heart-searching experience until men and women get right with God. That's yes. right. We're at the end time. Yes. How many want your candle then? Yes. Yes. Well, I want to tell you something. The Holy Ghost is getting ready to light, friends. They're going to be another uh, bunch of people with their candles lit like they got it lit on the day. Yes. Yes. I want it lit just yes. like they got it lit. Yes. 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 I don't want no man made fire to light it. I want that Holy Ghost to light it. Amen. It'll burn just like it burned back there. Yes, sir. I don't care if you're Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, or Presbyterian. Come, let us rejoice together. That time will come when the church will find its brotherly love, its holy decency, and its place in Christ. Then it will come to the other members of the body to come and rejoice with us. God wants the church to love him. It is a type of Christ. God didn't take Christ's church from a creed. Neither did he take it from a denomination. He has taken it from the heart of Christ, the spirit inside, through the blood. I don't care how religious you might be, if you're not covered by the blood, you're lost. It is vital. Amen. You're lost without the blood. How many of you with your heads bowed and your hands lifted will say, Brother Brother, remember me, remember me in your prayer. I come tonight, I didn't come here to be seen, I came to find out something. And I believe that God spoke to my heart while you were preaching. I realize that I am wrong and I want to be a real true Christian. Remember Solomon, how he spoke of it. He said, Come, my love, let us walk through the pomegranates, let us walk through the garden of spices. He said, Her lips look like cloves of us and so forth. He loved his little wife. He said, Come, let us go. And when you get down to your altar to pray, is your heart so true and your soul unadulterated? You say, Lord God, let us take our love. And he says, Yes, my lover, I love you. Or have you been committing fornication? Have you been flirting with the world? God help the people to be in love with the Lord Jesus. The devil has put everything beautiful in the world so you can flirt with it. You've got everything out there for you. Big, beautiful, this, beautiful, that, beautiful, this, bigger, this, beautiful, that. And he's trying to flirt with you, see? Trying to get you to wink at the world. Amen. Well, how would this need to keep your eyes so centered on Jesus? Amen. Won't it be so wonderful, though, when it is so sold out to God and then you're standing up about two miles high and then you realize that the rapture is taking place and you're heading for the marriage supper of the Lamb. God don't let us lose the vision. The hour that we're living in. Friend? Amen. Whoa. So much that I like to say, but not say. A person who thinks he's insufficient, who is rejected, that's the person God uses. God wants us in that kind of a shape that we can yield ourselves to God and can't fail. This is, oh, this is 11, 1961, in Hebrews 11. He uses a man who thinks he can't do it. Not a man who thinks
thanks you can. There you are, Brother George. And you and Brother Ray is in good shape.
watch out. You know, this, all the blessings and the power of the Spirit's been poured out. You find out it'll come down to nothing pretty soon. You've got to pray. Amen. What it is, we're overfed and under pray. Amen. Brother, Lord, uh, God lay a burden up on our heart that God will send a, a, a minister here and let's have a revival. And get in here and have some fasting and praying and screaming out to God for God to send a killing in us Amen. so we can get out of this place, brother. Amen. I tell you, I, I'm dying inside to think that uh, we can't get any closer to the Lord Jesus than we are. we got a great uh, a confession, but no possession of nothing. What is good is going on preaching about this thing, brother? We need to get down and cry out to God and grab a hold of God and take this thing by faith and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Away with all of these depressing devils and demons of hell. Rebuke them out of our way and try to up it over. Praise God. Kick them out. Let go and let God have his way. Why, the devil is a the devil is beating the people to death, brothers and sisters. People are, are, are being beat to death by the devil. There's no sense in, in letting the devil take advantage of us the way he is. We're the children of God and the devil should have his head under our footprint. We need to put the devil down underneath our foot and step on it. And then we wonder why God don't move in behalf of our... Uh, listen... Uh, 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 talking about our, our problems and uh, and thinking about it, reasoning them out, we'll never get the job done. Brother, it's prayer and intercession with the Holy Ghost to get the job done today. But Lord God, if there is going to be a revival, where in the world is the women and men that will let themselves be killed to bring a revival? God's got to have men and women to bring a revival with. I'm concerned about whether I'm a are going to be part of it. Am I going to be in am I, am I just dilly dallying around and getting in a pastoral rut? Brother, I ain't wanting to know such thing like that. Amen. Brother, I told my wife, I'm ready to go to the wilderness, brother, and fast and pray until God comes after a bunch of bones if I don't get this thing. I've been to this afternoon three or four hours, live crying to them. I cry until I'm weak. I kind of uh, talk to them. I'm dry. Crying so much. I, I've got to have something, friend. I want to find God and the power of His resurrection. I want. I don't care. I want to find Him. I don't want to uh, just pitter pat around and play church, brother, sister. I want to. I want to have a church. I want to be uh, in a, a place that's on. Uh, why can't we be on fire for the Lord? Jesus? There's no reason. If a woman can yield herself to her husband, why can't we yield ourselves to our husband, Jesus Christ, in a love affair that's uh, beyond all expectation? It's the only reason is, is because we are resisting the Lord God. Amen. 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 Our feelings is hurt if this one says this, or this one don't do that, or this or the other. Why away with feelings and uh, God give us the sixth sense to go by. Amen. We're letting our feel, taste, smell, and, and hear take advantage of God. But we need to yield ourselves to the sixth sense, the faith of God, and, and cast down all the five senses of the natural man. Put down the old man and let the sixth sense lead us to a death in Christ. And an old St. Paul's Holy Ghost sky blue. Sin, kill it, revive. Brother and sister, men and women are dying for an old St. Paul's Holy Ghost revival tonight. You say, well, Brother Lamb, sure people come in and just can't get over our services on the weekend. Sure. But that ain't answering for you and I. No, they it ain't coming here. It ain't coming here and we're losing uh, time and quality of the Spirit all the time. And I've been saying about it. Somebody's going to have to do something that's going to be gone. Wait like to see, and I'll be gone. When he's gone, I'll be gone. I guarantee you. We'll either move with God or I'll move. And I'll go if I have to go to Africa to find God. If I have to go to South America, I'll leave. 
go and let a killing take place and let God use Himself. God can make strength out of weakness. You're not a Christian until you're born again and baptized with the Holy Ghost. Get weak so you can get strong. Empty out. Empty yourselves out. Pour yourselves out on the altar. Brother Branham prays. I remember this prayer. There's only one thing left, Father. One thing that I can see. That's either you raised up somewhere with some empty vessels. Empty vessels. And make this world ashamed of itself. I'm going to read that again. There's only one thing left, Father, that I can see. And that's either you raised up somewhere with some empty vessels to make this world ashamed of itself or send Jesus right quick. The end is here, Lord. There's only these things left, two things left to be done. We must see it right away. We know it's at the end, Father. We'll see a mighty something rise by the way. Or we'll see the coming of the Lord. All prophecies are fulfilled. Dear, my dearly beloved brother and sister, I, 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 today, I, I'm just like a dead man, see. I, I have got to find something. I can't go on the way I'm going. I can't. I gave out a year and a half here. And I have, I'm, I, I, as soon as I can, I'm going to go off somewhere for myself, leave my family and everything, and I've got to find something. I, I can't do it. I have got to get, well, I can't keep giving out and not take in. I have got to meet God again. I can't rest in my experience that I have uh, uh, back so and so, back so and so. I have got to meet Him again. I've got to hear from God. I can't make it. I've got to have more than, you see, you don't know. You know, I can't tell you everything. I wish you could. There's things that none of you even know about. You don't have no comprehension at all about it at all. Some of the things that I, I know. See, and I have got and I see I've got to grow with grace. I you can only grow as far as I am. Amen. That's all. Amen. You'll never, no matter what you think, you'll never be no more than your pastor. Amen. Amen. And when I cease to grow and press on with God, that's when you stop. And I have got to take you on in your spiritual growth. I have got to find God. I ain't fast enough. I ain't desperate enough. I ain't sincere enough. And I see more faults in me than I've seen you all. I'll be honest with you. You say, I don't, people say, I don't see any fault in you, brother. I've got plenty of them. I see them myself. And, and today, I, I am so desperate for God, I can't stand it. I want to find Him and know Him. It's a part of His resurrection. Hey, He's dead one. Hey, hey, hey. Man, I cannot stand it to go day, day. The days are miserable to me. Outside of finding His presence, life has no meaning upon this earth. Amen. But to be in the presence of the Lord God and hear His voice hey, means more than all the world hey, can hey. offer, my friend. And I tell you, the letters that are received from people around the country, the notes that they send and the telephone calls, the need of the people, somebody, somewhere has got to find God. Brother, we need somebody. I don't care what anybody, anybody say. God, we need God to raise up somebody, praise God, and shake this thing and wake the people up and challenge the promise of God before the people. He wants it, I tell you, because people are dying and they're so depressed and oppressed and beaten and bruised, they don't know which way to turn. Yeah. Brother and sister, we holler about, oh Lord, use us. There never was a time when God needs somebody to use like He needs today and He can't put His finger on a man. No, where in this world can He show me where the finger of God is resting upon? One individual out of billions of souls, Amen. you cannot show me God's finger resting upon one individual. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, if we could only realize the seriousness of the statement that I just made, they are sisters that are precious that are dying with cancer tonight that needs a word from the Lord. There are daddies that are dying in a hospital tonight 
trying to think of somebody. God needs men that met Him and talked with Him and has the calling of God in their life where He can speak to them and deliver the people. Brother, the people are in need of deliverance today and no man wins a heart and I'm guilty as all of them. It means staying away from my wife a month of time and going in a hill or a hole. I, I, I want God to, I want to do it. If it means just fasting for the skin and bone living on me, then that's what I want to do. I cannot live two lives any longer and let Bob have his way and let the Lord have half of me. I want God to take all of me or take me out for me. Amen. How many feel like that? God, if we could come to the place of where we could get desperate and mean that and stay with it and lay on to the horns of the altar till we heard from God. And it, it the need gets worse every day. Poor people, sincere, loving people, where the devil is, but just see, when they get in the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit, out of the change. But everybody can't come to us. We need empty vessels. Oh, God. How many like to have an empty vessel here tonight? To just to empty it out before the Lord and let the Lord fill it up and say, Lord, here my sin me. Oh, the hour is, the need is great, friend, and the hour is late. My Priscilla comes. May the Lord God lay it upon your heart to pray for your pastor. I love you and I, I, I want to help you. And I feel like I, I need something from the Lord to help you with Pray that I'll meet the Lord. I want my soul, soul and the love of the Lord Jesus, that I never raise my voice, never speak a harsh word to my wife. I, I want to be uh, prayed up to the place that if they come and said, uh, Brother Lamb, your whole house burnt down, that I never raise an eyebrow and say, Well, blessed be the name of the Lord, and give the Lord take it away. How many want to be like that? Amen. Say, Brother Lambert, did you know that mister said you was a, a false anointing one of the devil incarnated? Well, I, I, well, he's a lovely brother. He probably just amen. felt bad that day and he didn't do that. How many say amen? amen. I don't say, boy, I'll give him a piece of my mind. I'll tell him what I think about it. Brother George, I heard this poor man screaming out over the day. Why just aggravate the life out of me, you little man talking away from me? Holler at me like that. Holler at Brother George, Brother Brother. Go over and give him peace of my mind. Well, you know that ain't right. There's nothing that any man does ought to touch your spirit at all. According to the Bible, it's just love, joy, peace, and all and Amen. Nothing bothers you. My Lord. I may want to come. I want to come to that place. Amen. And if we're not, it's a lack of empty vessel. Amen. I'm ashamed of myself, children. I am. When I hear the things that I hear, when I hear man, the angel of the Lord say, "You are not sincere enough, brother Brandon," then that smites my heart until it leaves me a dead man. Well, if he wasn't sincere after all he done, where am I? I'm not even in the race. And yet God is crying for empty vessels. I only know where he found one. And he's not here no more. And the Bible said, Herein was the Son of God made manifest. He might destroy the works of the devil. And oh, the devil is having a heyday upon people. There are cancers. Oh, Lord, if you only knew. See? i got a responsibility toward God, a call that God gave me that you cannot satisfy or answer for that. Only I, only me alone is tormented with And I, I, I want you to pray that God is... Kill me. 
that I, my life would be so yielded to the Lord that I, out of me could pour forth blessing to the people. They've got to have help. I just can't not longer. I want God to confirm the Word. Yeah. Confirm yeah. the Word yeah. with signs and yeah. wonders and miracles and make it live and deliver the sick and afflicted. What a blessed thing it is that God could put His hand on a little woman or somewhere and some little sister laying uh, on a deathbed of cancer. But there's a yielded empty vessel. Oh, God, if we could see it like it is. And God is hell bound. Oh, He could use a donkey. Sure He could. But He wants to use a human being. In order to use a human being, He's got to have an empty vessel. A dead vessel that can, He can pour Himself into to use and he cannot move in the earth until he finds an empty vessel. He can't even come until he finds empty vessels. No wonder Brother Bradley said God sent a killer that we might have a revival. Because God, there's got to be somebody somewhere that's willing to be killed. Now, they, nobody wants to die. We want to live. But, oh God, that the Spirit says, uh, I want to die. But the flesh tomorrow will say, I'll live, I'll live. That old man, with her heads bowed, Sister Priscilla plays softly. <coughs> Where he leads me, I'll follow. <laughs> it's so easy. <coughs> the spirit is so withered, but the flesh is so weak. And the Bible said that David purposed in his heart, purposed in his heart. And that's what you and I got to do. That oh, I thought today, Lord God, if I could go to church tonight and we could rededicate ourselves or do something, Lord, don't let us die. I had a sister tell me today, said, but I thought the people would be on fire here for the Lord. Yes, I said, that's true. We ought to be. And Brother George and Brother Ray, you don't have discouraged. It, it makes him feel nobody wants to come out to prayer meeting. I, I tell you, the Tuesday night prayer meeting will tell you what you got. You can say what you want to. He can come to church on Sunday, but can he come pray? Friend, there's nothing in this world means anything but seeking the kingdom of God. Nothing, nothing, it ain't worth it. Now our home should be so filled with the love of God, so peaceful. We should be praying to a place that we're ready every minute for the Lord to speak. Lead us and guide us by His Holy Spirit. Is there a one here tonight that's maybe you're cold in the Lord? Maybe you've been running from the Lord. Maybe you haven't come to a, a place where you want to Really go all the way to the Lord. You want, brother, every head bowed and every eye closed. Oh, I love you. I love God's people. And I want to help them. Is there one here saying, Brother Bob, would you pray for me that I'll, that I'll, I'll come to that place? God bless you, brothers. God bless you, brothers. Look at all my hands. Bless you, brothers. Bless you, sisters. God sees your hand. You just don't want to go on professing. But you want a, 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 a possession. You want to possess God. Bless you, sister. God bless those hands. God sees those hands. God bless you, young boy. It all be over. God bless you. God bless you. God sees your hands. I've got both mine up, Lord. Lord Jesus. People, Lord, are dying all around us, Lord. Lord, from down in Florida, I leave these letters, Lord. And then I thank our little brothers and sisters around, Lord, that don't uh, understand what you've done this hour. And they're discouraged, Lord. Sick, sick, bruised, wounded, Lord. Lord, if we don't lay it to heart like we should. We're so taken up, Lord, with everything else. Have no time for the poor and the needy, God. Oh, God, you said all those words are true. He that forsaken his life loses 
lose his life for my sake shall be married. But if you seek to find your life, you will lose them. Oh, Father, help us, Lord, to lose our life, God. Help us, Lord, to empty out and come to a complete surrendering to the Lord Jesus. Father, would you forgive me tonight, Lord? Lord, I love you, Father. I need you, Lord. I need more of thee, Lord. I don't have enough of thee, Father. Oh, God. The people, Lord, the bride is so needy, Lord. Won't you please bless every man that was up there the Lord? That we will purpose in our hearts to dedicate ourselves to you as never before. Lord, and Next Tuesday night, God, let everybody make a special effort to come and pray with my brother, Lord. Lord, help us to pass. Help us to give, get some hunger pains, Lord. Give us grace and strength, Lord, to empty out. And to be empty vessels, to be filled up with oil, Lord. Lord, we know that somebody somewhere... Your hand's going to rest upon them. You're going to bring a mighty revival to the bride. Oh, God, give me a little part in that, Lord. Yes. Use these people, Lord. Take us. Take us. God made this uh, be a lighthouse, Lord. May it not slack up, Lord. It's getting awful lax, Lord. God, shake us up, Lord, and help us to realize that we cannot stand still. We have got to go forward. May we pull together and work together, Lord. There's our little brother right out, laying up there, Lord, that broken leg, that precious brother. Such a precious brother, Lord. Father, give him grace to purpose in his heart to seek the living God regardless of brothers, sisters, wives, jobs, or whatever it is, Lord God, may you put that into his heart. Bless this little wife, Lord, and may they dedicate themselves anew to the kingdom of God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
sleep, can't eat or nothing. Not one time did it ever fail him. Oh, when I got so busy and listened to man and sidetrack, now, oh, look where I am.
day to be born this hour. That I might live my life for others and not myself. That I could give up my family, my, my everything, whatever it is. Oh, may it be so. I know the price that God requires. Oh, yeah. God, give me grace that I may serve. I love the Lord Jesus. Oh, and I want to see the bride blessed. <laughs> that this unity of the devil put down under the Lord's foot. Yeah. See unity and joy and peace to the broken heart of this hour. God grant that out of here tonight will come forth desperation and made up minds in their hearts, their spiritual minds. We'll yield our vessels that God may bring blessing and unity to the bride of Jesus Christ. You dumb mommies and the little daddies crying their heart out tonight. Loved ones that just passed away and people with broken hearts. And oh, God, that we can manifest the resurrection of the Holy Ghost. If people want to see Jesus, they don't want to see me. For you, they want to see Jesus. God, help us to empty out that people may see with their heads bowed and God bless you for coming out tonight and standing here close to do it. I pray God bless you. And that sometime, many times as possible, you can pray for the service Sunday morning. Pray for those that are trying to move into this area that when they'll come, they'll find God and meet Him face to face. They'll come, they'll not be disappointed, but they'll sit in a heavenly atmosphere feeling the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. May the cripples walk in the lane be made whole and made a blind see. And it can happen. God can give us a revival. He 